glory to the Empire and to this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Hello everyone! Today we are, wait, what's this? Crappy CGI? Oh no! That can only mean that it must be time for a franchise reboot! Now, normally on terrible writing advice, I tend to stick to helping amateur writers and occasionally screenwriters. However, this episode is aimed at a more exclusive clientele, namely rich media moguls looking to exploit our ever-shrinking pool of nostalgia. Well, them and the mistreated screenwriters who will have most of their script thrown out and rewritten by the director. Besides, this is the future of storytelling, because at this rate, by the year 2030, we will hit the reboot singularity. So ready your nostalgia goggles as terrible writing advice goes drilling for beloved franchises to exploit. Now, the most important thing to remember when rebooting a franchise is that the highest priority is not reimagining this classic and beloved work for a modern audience so that a new generation can hopefully experience the same feeling of awe and wonder that made the original work so beloved, but to instead focus all energy on creating an expanded universe. Marvel may bank and we want a slice of that multi-billion dollar pie. Shared universes is where it's at right now, even though Marvel is about the only one to pull it off so far. Now, how can this be accomplished? By starting small, telling a largely self-contained story, and keeping the characters and story engaging. Why bother with the legwork when we can skip to the good stuff? We want to increase the story's scale without regards to the story's scope. The stakes have to be high for the trailer shots after all. This means that we should start not with solid characterization or a believable plot, but to instead dedicate most of our resources to teasing out a whole series of stories we will never get to after the first bombs. But what about the tone of our reboot? Now, conventional wisdom would suggest that matching the tone of the original is the best bet. However, others would suggest that altering the tone may be needed in order to better gel with modern audiences. They're both wrong. Audiences want dark and gritty. See? It's just like the original, but pointlessly dark. We will still spend a ton of money on that crappy CGI, even though everything is so dark you can't see it. Money well spent there. Since I brought up CGI, be sure to use that over older special effects techniques, because audiences won't believe it unless it looks like it came from the original Quake engine. Don't worry about capturing the original designs, even if they had a clear theme. Art direction is for children's coloring books, the same way themes are for 8th grade book reports. Speaking of themes, once we rip that out, we might still have to deal with the work's original social commentary, cultural perspective, historical context, and overall message. This beating heart of the work should be ripped right out and tossed in the bin like the garbage it is. It will be replaced with fast-paced action scenes and inane snarky dialogue. Did the original contain a scathing satire of 80s corporate culture? Let's just rip that out and replace it with something more dumbed, I mean simplified, for modern audiences. I'll just jam a few buzzwords I heard on the news and done! See? That's just as good. Oh no! It looks like a bunch of nitpicky internet critics with zero ability to suspend their disbelief have poked fun at the original work. My reboot is the perfect way to address these pretentious critiques found in all of those top 10 plot hole lists that plague Google's search results when I'm doing research for these videos. What a great use of precious runtime and story space utilized to fix plot holes that pretty much only BuzzFeed authors care about. But what about elements of the original that would be considered problematic by a modern audience? That's easy. You just push those tropes out a window and pretend they never happened. End of story. We need room for a fresh set of problematic tropes after all. Now that we have flawlessly dealt with any and all problematic elements of the original, it's time to focus on the characters. These are beloved icons of a classic, so naturally the best move is to turn them into barely recognizable caricatures of the originals. Be sure to have them spout the originals catchphrases over and over again because that's obviously why people liked them. Another option is to have the original characters sidelined so our new characters can steal the spotlight. See? Reboots are nothing like fanfiction. Oh wait, I got a better idea. Let's kill off the original characters in the most dumb, mean-spirited, and shocking way possible to make sure the audience knows that this time, it's darker and edgier. An alternative is to kill them off screen and mention it like once or in the tie-in comic. Ah, uh, tie-in comics. The only place where you can go to find the villain's motives and make sense of the plot. If all else fails, then the best bet is to simply completely ditch the original characters and replace them with an all-new cast of original characters in a whole new plot and setting. That way, we can do whatever we want, but still get the franchise's name recognition. I call this the Ship Theseus solution. 
Now, all of this may seem like we are systematically destroying the original, which is true. I can't be bothered with understanding the source material that should be held in contempt by the entire production staff. Will this anger the fans? Of course! And those angry fans will rant on their blogs and YouTube channels about how we are ruining the franchise and thus generate free advertising. Besides, smugly dismissing angry fans is what Twitter was made for. Well, that and permanently crippling nuanced discourse. If things feel really bad, we can always throw in some out-of-nowhere fanservice. Fanservice is the lifeblood of reboots. Not only is it excellent for trailer footage, but can be used to lull fans into a nostalgia-induced stupor that will shut down their critical thinking. The best thing about fanservice is that the fans can't complain because it's what they said they wanted. What a great way to deflect from running that plotline into the ground. However, what if fans and general audiences just don't want a reboot, but instead wish to see the franchise take new and interesting directions as well as witness the evolution of the setting and characters? Well, we can't have that. That would require not only more thought planning and work, but might upset the money-making status quo. Why take a gamble on a sequel when we can just redo the first story and call it a sequel? Yes, people will see through this, but by that point we will already have their money. If expectations for a sequel is too high, then we can always just do a reboot and call it a prequel instead. We will have to badly mangle the original story to make it fit as a prequel, but that's okay. Just be sure to wreck the continuity in the process. If fans get upset, then just say it's an alternate timeline. If the franchise's continuity gets too snarled, then we can always just do a time travel story to reset it. We can also use our prequel disguised reboot to explore the origin story of a character who didn't need an origin story to begin with, but hey, here's the thing no one asked for. Well, I suppose the marketing department did. Another very good option is to use our reboot to mash several stories worth of plots into one gargantuan disaster, I mean story arc. We can also just steal all of the best lines from the original and stuff them in at random points no matter how little sense that makes. All of those parts of the original franchise were good, so if we just make our reboot nothing but those, then the story will surely also be good no matter how much context we have to murder in the process. That's what people want, a multi-million dollar clip show. But other than that, we want the audience to settle in, feel comfortable, and let their guard down, hoping to enjoy a new iteration of a love story. Then BAM! A love triangle! Ha! Did you think the reboot wouldn't take the opportunity to shove a dumb romance plot in there somewhere even if the original escaped it? Now if everything has gone according to my guide, the reboot should make as much money as it is bland, and it should be very bland. Yes, as art it will be utterly forgettable, but that's a feature. Because we're just going to reboot it again in a few years. Barry, I am counting on you to handle this video sponsor. Skillshare. Yes, my emperor. House bad guys will ensure that the sponsors must flow. The premium membership that unlocks access to over thousands of classes is safe in our hands, all for the good of the empire. But mostly for us, for he who controls the sponsors controls the TWA expanded universe. And with it, we will destroy our enemies at House Good Guys and... Who in the name of my favorite backstabbing dagger are you? We are the Knights of Artistic Integrity. Listen, if this is about those messengers, as I've said before, if they don't want to get shot, then they shouldn't deliver me bad news. No, not that. The Empire has chosen to escalate this conflict. Therefore, we have no choice but to gather our forces, raise the banners, march forwards, and issue you a stern warning. Very well. I promise not to exploit this video's sponsors for my own mysterious ends. Wait, you are house bad guys. For some reason, I don't want to trust you. I see my PR department has outlived their usefulness. You forced my hand. I now have no choice but to issue you... A second stern warning. Very well. We shall settle this like true men, with thinly veiled low-key put-downs. Nice armor. Shame about the color scheme, though. My armor's shiny as your head. True, but I have no need to hide my shortcomings behind armor. Hard to hide being short. Nice museum piece of a sword. Is that where you get your accent from, too? You're just jealous of my perfect hair forever. Why would I be jealous? I just finished a class on low-budget filmmaking tips and tricks for an indie look, which I'm using for my upcoming documentary, House Bad Guys. Why you should totally trust us. Might want to take a class on rebranding while you're at it. 
Maybe get renamed to House OK Guys. Well, it's a good thing you can't stop me from telling TWA fans that they can get two months of Skillshare for free by going to skl.sh slash TWA14 or click on the link in the description below. After that, it's less than $10 a month. Even my minions can't afford that. Those guys with the dumb helmets? <laughs> he thinks my helmet is dumb. Aw, now look what you did. You hurt that minion's feelings, you monster. I didn't even know they had feelings. Now I have to kill him for being weak.